Can you believe that you've been in Motorhead for 30 years? Just about believe it, yeah. I never thought it would happen, but uh, it's unbelievable, but it's true, so I uh, believe it. <laughs> you have to. Does yeah. it feel like it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling a bit tired. So the new album, Aftershock, is your 21st album? If you say so. Crazy. 21 albums. That's, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, what, what can the fans expect from this one? Well, kind of a double dose of classic Motorhead. I mean, we've got 14 original songs on this record. And we're all really pleased with it. There's a couple of little surprise tracks, but nothing's really a surprise if you're a follower of Motorhead because uh, you never know what to expect. But it's, uh, I, I rate it as one of our greatest albums, and I'm really pleased with it, and I hope everyone loves it. I th I've been listening to it, and I think it's quite different to your other stuff. There's a few slow numbers on there and more bluesy as well. One of my favourite tracks is um, Dust and Glass. Yeah. Almost a little bit like The Doors or something. That's I don't know, I, it's got a twang of it. That's what I thought, yeah. We, we wanted to do a slow song and I came up with uh, some chords and some strange guitar tones. And then uh, it, it never felt like anything like The Doors to me. And then when Len put a vocal on later, uh, I, I don't know, it could be wrong. It's, I'm probably too close to all the music, but... Um, you're the first person to think it sounds slightly like the Doors influence. Really? Apart, apart from myself. Apart from yourself. Well, there, there you go. go. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> We're on the right track, which is good. Yeah. And uh, there's Lost Woman Blues, which is, again, a bit slow. Well, that picks up later. But tell us a little bit about uh, Lost Woman Blues. That was another one of my, my riffs. I think I, I think I wrote it in a hotel one night. And I, I think I recorded it on my telephone. On my Blackberry, I shouldn't, probably shouldn't advertise it, but uh, <laughs> and then went in the next day, luckily it was still on there. I had sort of a ZZ Top feel in mind for that, because we're all massive fans of ZZ Top. So uh, that, that worked out really good at, at the end. You know, it's, it's a great, I think it's one of the great Motorhead albums, you know. It's just, it's, it's when, it gets, when it gets nasty and raw on it, it gets really, really bad. There's just know? lots of different layers to it, which I really like. I, I don't know. We, we're actually too close to it. I'd rather interview you and the fans and ask to see what you think and what we think. We, you know. But I think it's a tremendous Motorhead album. So, so talking of the fans, um, Motorhead, along with Classic Rock Magazine, have done a fan pack. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Which the um, album is included in that. Yep. So it's coming out a few days before the album's release. Yeah, amazing. I'm going to buy ten. You're going to buy 10, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> is it nice having your own little fan pack? Of course it is. It's brilliant. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honour. Do you get a bit nervous before albums come out? Uh, no. No, not no. anymore. Did you in the beginning? Probably a bit more, yeah, a little bit, yeah. But I know this, one, I know this one's good, so... I, I don't think you have anything to be nervous about. So the fact, why did you decide to do a fan pack again? Because you've done, you've done another one with Classic Rock, haven't you, as yeah. well? Yeah. Because it's fun, it works good for everyone, you know, everyone gets a good deal on it, you know, it promotes the band, it promotes the magazine, you know, people, people get the other stuff, people buy the thing, it's perfect, you know, it's actually one of the good, real, nice things that work in life these days. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's quite nice having your own little, little mini book almost, and yeah. I, I know in it there's um, a 60 page history of the band. 60 pages. 60 yeah. pages. There you go. They've managed to condense it to 60 <laughs> pages. I don't know how, but they have. Um, and, I mean, looking back at your career, I mean, what are the standout moments for you? Uh, just being here now uh, after 30 years is quite a good standout moment, I guess. You know, and just, just being proud of our music after, after every good gig, which most of our gigs are pretty good, every gig. You, you can't really, you can't put a price on it, really. Winning a, gr a Grammy was great. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would have a Grammy on my mantelpiece and stuff. And, uh, you know, playing it, just good gigs are good gigs. It don't matter if it's in front of a quarter of a million or if we played. For instance, we went to Australia. We played to 12 people in 1985. There were 12 people. 12? We had 150 at the, at the airport. <laughs> and then we played on the Gold Coast. We played a place called the Bombay Rock. And we had a hundred. We know we had one thousand five hundred people there. And then the next day, we were playing six miles down the coast, and we had twelve. So we really must have sucked <laughs> on the Friday night, because there's not many people showed up on the sun on Saturday night. But uh, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all good, you know.
It's, no, it's not real. The highlight is just being able to do done what, what we've done, I guess, you know. Yeah. Hang, well, out, hang out with great guys and great road crew and, and meet, you know, nice people and, you know, play good music. when you're not on the road now. I could do like, a few oh. gigs now, yeah. I could do a couple of gigs now. So yeah. we're looking forward to the November, December tour. And getting out and playing some of the uh, the new tracks. Yeah, yeah. Before you joined Motorhead, were you a big fan of the band? Uh, not particularly. No, I, 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 viewed, I, I did Ace of Spades and I think Overkill and Bomber tracks and I didn't quite know what to make of it. I, it was different. I didn't dislike it. I didn't. I wasn't over the moon with it, but it, I was too probably involved with my other band at the time trying to create... But I knew I knew Motorhead was creating something different at the time. So, so you went for it, and thirty years it, later, yeah, yeah. thirty years later, you're still here. And sinker, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it true? There's a story going around that when you were twelve years old, you got a, a signature of Lemmy's yeah, when yeah. he was in Hawkwind. Yeah, it was Cardiff Capital Theatre. I've still got the program. It was Hall of the Mountain Grill tour, uh, and it was the first time I'd saw Hawkwind. Uh, I must have, I was born in '61, so it must I must have been. You have to check on the dates on this, but I'm, it must have been 72 or 74. And after, after they scared me to death, the show, they had all the weird lights and do not panic and all this psychedelic stuff going on. I didn't know what to expect. And the lady you know. with the big boobs. Oh, Stacia, yeah. Stacia, yeah. yeah. yeah that was <laughs> Actually, I bet you she, remember her. <laughs> she actually came to see us once or twice a few years ago. Oh, very, really? Very, very sweet, yeah. Oh, I'm sure she is. Yeah, very sweet, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they managed to persuade her to get her no, top off. I know, had many a sleepless night. <laughs> but, yeah, after, after the show, I'm waiting in, uh, in the fire of Cardiff Capital Theatre, which has since been knocked down. And uh, we didn't try and get some autographs, as you do when you're, when you're young. And uh, it was only, only Lemmy came out, and he signed his old-style autograph. He was like, ah... Uh, Lemmy or whatever. 
But if somebody told me that night I'm going to be in a band with him for 30 years, I would have just said, you're off your rocker, go to the mental asylum. But it's, you know, I, I, it's a good story, which I, I think it's an inspiring story because it can show to people that anything could happen. Like, nobody would ex I never would have expected to be in a band with that guy. I asked for his autograph when I was 12 or 30 years and still going when I was, when I was 52. But it happened. So we'd never give up and, you know, and your dreams can come true sometimes, you know. This is nice. Exactly. You've got, what, 30 years of being in the band, yeah. a Grammy, 21 albums, yeah, yeah. two classic rock magazine fan packs. More guitars, yeah, two yeah. of them, yeah. More so, guitars than I know what to do with, yeah. And a Marshall Fridge. A Marshall Fridge. Yeah, Marshall Fridges, they're cool. There you go, they're that's pretty, the best yeah. thing. <laughs> you mentioned, I think it was in the fan pack, I, I, I read a bit of the interview, and it said that some people say that your albums sound the same. And I think your response to that was, well, that's your point. Yeah, but they don't want us to sound like the Osmonds, do they, on the next album? You know, we, we, we write for us, the three of us, we don't write for any record companies, we don't write for any fans. We write what we think is good music for the three of us and if people like it that's great and if people don't like it just we don't care because we like it. if it don't sell 20 if it sells 20 copies that's fine you know but i think that's that's why we've carried on for so long the, it's the purity of it when you start getting other people involved it's like for instance i used to do guitar solos and i'd say what do you think of that guys and somebody would say oh that's great phil and somebody else would say yeah what a solo i'd be going well what is it? Then somebody else would say, well, it's not bad, whatever. And you change this bit, change this. And you may change something like that. And you end up with a watered down, it's not pure. Like, it's best to get something pure and people like it or hate it. I'd rather do that. So now I, I didn't listen to anyone. Just my, my gut feeling. Is that one of the reasons why you've worked with Cameron Webb a few times? Because in a way, he's so honest, probably so honest with you. He's not a yes man because he knows you guys so well. No, I, I can abuse Cameron. Yeah, you can. <laughs> That's yeah. why you work, because yeah, you like can abuse, abuse him. him Cameron, yeah. yeah. I abuse him more than he realises. One day he will realise.
new album. Which Motorhead albums are you most satisfied with? Well, definitely Bastards and Howard Benson producing. We spent a lot of time doing everything, songwriting, we're borrowing certain guitars for certain things and the production. We put Howard in, that was his first album with us, Howard, and after three weeks, he was in a, he had a nervous breakdown. We gave him a nervous breakdown. He was in hospital. We used to have him make, make him come into the studio wearing a long blonde wig. And, uh, but he came back for three albums after that. He must have liked it. <laughs> so he liked it. Yeah, he liked the but, punishment. Yeah, you know, he needed the money. I'm not sure. But uh, Howard was brilliant. So that was a great. A lot, all our albums, are, compared to a lot of other bands, which I'm not going to name, all our albums are top notch. It's good that you think so. That's well, great, isn't so, it? Oh, yeah. There's, no, there's no fill, very few filler songs on our records. Yeah, especially on the new one, that's for there's sure. There's nothing on that one, yeah. So, I mean, you've been known to, to knock out an album in like six weeks. How did it work with the new album? For this one, we, we, we got together in Los Angeles like January or February of last year and came up with a bunch of stuff, five or six ideas, songs. Then we went on the road and we came up with half a song now <laughs> on the road now maybe two two ideas on the road and then this year we, we got back to los angeles we locked ourselves in a room for for two months came up with some more stuff and then we, we, we recorded it over quite a lengthy period of time this year so, so we, we, a, a longer process on this with this yeah, one it's better than 10 days record 10 days writing and whatever yeah yeah i, I think it's good we, we've had more time to reflect and you know, there's lots of songs on this, so I'm really happy with this one. And so how does it work, your your sort of process? Do you, I know you said you've been on the road writing some stuff and then in the studio and stuff like that, but do you go off separately and then come back together or do you just all work together on, on a song or well, does, it, does it vary? As a general rule, um, I probably would come up with, eight, just say 80% of the time I'll come up with some ideas and riffs or half songs. I'll record them and on my phone or some in the studio or whatever, some shape, whatever I am at the time. Then show them to the boys and they'll they'll criticise it. They'll say, this is crap. And I'll say, no, it's not crap. And somebody else will say, no, how dare you say it's crap? And we'll argue about it and stuff. And then somebody will add bits. And So what, once I get the initial idea in, it goes into a pot then and then it builds up. It's just, just like cookery, really. You know, obviously... Lem does all the lyrics because Lem's amazing with the lyrics and stuff. But uh, not not all the time. Sometimes Lem will come up with an idea, and our drummer Mickey, uh, he he yeah, he contributes a lot. You know, he's singing riffs. He's a pain in the ass sometimes. He's singing riffs in my ears <laughs> and everything. So it's all it's all you know with the three of us. Do you ever get like a phone call in the middle of the night? Oh look, listen to this. Uh, I've got this great song. Uh, those days are long gone. <laughs> now they're gone at 11 o'clock. My phone is on silent. <laughs> yeah. Now you mentioned Lemmy. I have to ask, how's he doing? He's doing really good, actually. Yeah, I, um, I spoke to him the day before yesterday. He just moved uh, into an, an, his new house, which is not far from his other place. Uh, and he's, he's feeling a lot better. And we'll be looking forward to doing November, December tour as normal. And we'll be like three spring chickens, you watch. That well, listen. Good. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, he's been through a lot with the, with the surgery and stuff, so... And the, the Wacken Festival, it was so hot that day. Yeah. It was, it was so hot. Everyone was just dying there, like, you know. No, he's a trooper, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. For the six songs we did play, we played really tight. It was amazing. It was great. But, yeah, he's fine. Them's fine. He's, he's, uh, it's all good, so we've got everything booked, rehearsals booked, so... It's going to be killer. So it's looking good. Well, listen, Phil, thank you so much for coming in. I can't wait to see the fan pack. Have you seen it yet? I'm going to probably see it in about five minutes. In about five minutes. Okay, yeah. great. Well, listen, good luck with the gigs. You're welcome. That's great. Bye-bye. <laughs>
lovely Motorhead's Phil Campbell there and three brand new tracks which have never been played before on Team Rock Radio. Lost Woman Blues, Dust and Glass and Crying Game all taken off the new Motorhead album Aftershock which is included in the classic rock magazine fan pack ahead of its release. Go to teamrockradio.com to pre-order your copy.